Brief DVMs coming at you here today with kind of an interesting uh, update video on the uh, barn. Um, we put out a video on it uh, last fall and since that time we've been working on uh, getting a couple things done. Uh, one of which is getting water in the barn. Uh, second project will obviously be the heated floors and third project would be the tack room. So right now uh, basically what I'm showing you is, is the installation here of the uh, water line. We decided we'd pull it off the farmhouse because it has a one and a half horsepower pump off a well. So we had to get over to the farmhouse, which is 200 feet away. So we used a Kubota, uh, dug about an eight foot hole, and then we brought in a professional horizontal boring machine, um, kind of a big ditch witch monster. Um, it's really kind of an interesting machine. Basically, we backed up from our hole about 20 feet and started drilling kind of horizontally and and even a little bit down so in the course of 200 feet we dropped down into the ground um, several feet to get underneath the footing of the farmhouse and come up where the actual well comes up into the house so we could attach to it so you know probably dropped about you know 10 feet over the course of the 200 feet uh, in the process of getting the line and what they basically did is uh, they took pipe with a water bore tip on it so it's shooting water and it's it's chewing away at the dirt at the same time and they keep adding extensions to the pipe and they keep pushing this into the ground and then of course steering it electronically based upon their um, uh, locators that are outside uh, along the way. In the meantime uh, another set of the guys got inside the farmhouse down by where the well is and we have a, a, a large 80 gallon tank down there and we drilled in through the concrete floor with a jackhammer um, so that we could get access to that area where that uh, water line is going to be coming through from the ditch witch. Took us a little bit of effort uh, punching through a, a reinforced rebar floor that's five and a half inches thick concrete is, is a little bit of work but the jackhammer got through it. We got about a foot by foot hole um, eventually punched in it right next to the well line. So basically we've got the well outside it comes into the basement into the main tank and then at the main tank, we're going to tie into it and send it over to uh, the barn. So once we got um, through there, got the gravel removed, um, this particular floor has a foam core to it too, so we had to get that out of the way. Then we were able to take a uh, one inch, 200 PSI uh, water line and hook it up to the ditch witch, which is now met us. Um, it's underneath the house at this point. And then we we're able to take the ditch witch and pull the piping back. And of course it's got the special adapter which grabs onto the blue tubing and it literally pulls the blue tubing from the basement all the way back up to the barn um, which is it's it's really probably the best way of doing this now granted you could have done a vertical deal where you take the backhoe and dug alongside of the well outside the farm um, found the base of it tied into there and gone straight across over to the barn that way but it would have been a lot more digging and it wouldn't have been as nice for us because this way we've got all the shutoffs in one location uh, which is quite convenient um, in the basement of the farmhouse and we have access to it no running outside to trip a lever or hit a breaker uh, this is the hole we dug inside the barn it's uh, seven eight feet deep and you can see there there's the the, the blue tubing that got pulled so basically what we're going to do right now is we're going to cut that and we're going to cut out about a four inch piece so that we can put our um, uh, frost faucet in and then that's going to be about seven feet down on the ground so it's never going to freeze anyways and of course the floor on this is going to be heated so it, it should be fairly safe. Once we cut it we had to put our clamps on it um, and then get the the frost faucet in. The whole process went pretty good I'd say we had it all done in probably about four hours give or take maybe it was five um, but it was a good way of getting water to the barn um, we did take um, a five gallon pail after we put all the pea gravel in and stuck that right on top of the fitting just giving it some protection other people have done this it's worked well and then we took a big four inch PVC pipe schedule 40 and just dropped it in just to help protect the post particularly even during backfill and then we took uh, the Kubota U17 and we just pounded the dirt around it and pushed it all back the best we can really wanted to compact it as much as we can because we'd like to, to pour a concrete floor which we're in the process of right now and we'll show you in the next video 
Then we added an overflow drain. I know it looks tall there and not sunk in, but obviously once you pour the concrete, it'll look different. Back at the farmhouse here, uh, made a little bit of a mess, but we had to add an extra fitting, obviously. One fitting was already there uh, for the water to the house coming in from the well, but we had to add another fitting, obviously, to head out to the to the barn, and then, of course, we wanted a on-off valve on it for you know emergency shutoff. Once we got that all in place, then it's just a matter of heating up these, um, you know, water tubings, putting them on. Uh, these are uh, uh, fittings that go on fairly snug, and once they cool down, they don't really come off, and then you clamp it on for safety. Once we got all that done, we just had to make sure the pressure was set where we wanted, which is 60 PSI to the barn, and then certainly it was all about water testing it. One thing nice about doing it this way with the horizontal, we don't have to register two wells with the county doing vertical, and like I said, we don't have to rip the farmyard up, trenching all the way across. That uh, was really a, really a positive. It's about the best way I can explain it. So anyways, once we got this all hooked up and all situated, we did our water tests on it, we ran the water, and then we submitted a water sample once again to the state of Minnesota just because we wanted to make sure in the process of doing all this that we're not going to contaminate um, our water source or do something stupid that would get us in trouble. Um, so that was all done um, through the installation process. Currently the water is running in the barn, which is really nice, um, you know, and uh, we're in the process right now of finishing up the floor and putting in the tack room, and those two videos are to come, so be patient with us as we process that, and we'll show you that. Oh, at this stage, obviously, you can see this is where the professionals left us. Um, there's a collar there on it, uh, just a plastic to help protect it, and they've put all their debris back into the hole, but the floor needed to be repaired. I took that upon myself. Um, wasn't too tough. Uh, went to Menards, got some concrete repair for floor. It's basically concrete that you mix up yourself. I took a pail, um, mixed it up, put a little pea gravel in it, give it a little bit of uh, consistently that consistency that I wanted. I put it in, and then I trawled it smooth over the top to the best of my ability to try to match the flooring. Here it is out in the barn um, before we um, uh, hook a hose up to it or anything. But again, this is just. Uh, you know, a nice way to add water, and, and now we've got water in the barn, so we're going to continue working on the uh, pouring of the floor, which will be heated, and getting us a tack room, and those videos are to come, so please subscribe, and we'll uh, follow the progress with us, okay? Thank you, folks.